Forest Rangers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. One of my best buds from college was a geologist major who ended up becoming a ranger in the southeast US. I haven't spoken in years, as is the case with age, but I remember about 8 to 9 years ago, he was telling me about an old married couple that he had recently helped out. He had seen them come to the park several days in a row and found out they were visiting from out west, and they had gotten engaged their decades prior. They had been searching for a spot where they'd taken pictures of where he popped the question but were having trouble. After looking at the pictures and figuring out roughly where they were trying to get to, he escorted them in his vehicle, then hiked with them to where he thought it would be. They found it, and he left them there and went back to his station at the entrance. He said he got a weird feeling once he got back. And he felt like he needed to wait to see them whenever they left. Well, once it came time to lock up at night, he still hadn't seen them leave, so he reported it, left his assistant to wait at the shack at the entrance, and went back to where he left them. He found both of them lying down, spooning along the bank of the river. Neither were alive. He called the cops. I went through the nine yards and went home. The police were able to disclose to him their identities but weren't sure anything else initially. Later, he learned that the wife was terminally ill with cancer, and they had both committed suicide by ingesting some sort of chemical or pill combination medication. They just chose to do it where they had gotten engaged. My bud wasn't torn up about it. He was obviously sad about them dying, but he said that he thought they hadn't asked for help earlier because they didn't want anyone to think they helped kill them. I have a friend who is a trail ranger. Basically a ranger who can't get you in trouble. He told me about this time he was gathering illegally placed wildlife cameras and knocking down hunting stands, feeders, and blinds with another actual ranger. The other ranger wasn't feeling well, so he said he was going to head back as it's a one-hour AV ride. The friend finished up the last one when he heard voices. Keep in mind that he's far off the beaten path. He called out, and no one replied. As it was getting dark, he started to head back and found that his TV wouldn't start. He then noticed that the battery was not connected anymore. He reconnected it and started to drive, but it wasn't going fast at all. Less than a half mile later, the whole thing died. He radioed back, basically saying, Hey guys, I need someone to come pick me up. They told him they would, but it would be an hour. He asked if the other guy got back, and they said no. He settled down and started a small fire, but before long, he heard voices again. It's dark, he's not happy. The voices sound like arguments now, someone was angry and yelling at someone else who sounded more scared. He called out and asked if anyone needed help. The voices didn't seem to care. He guessed they had to be less than 1000 feet away. He radioed again and they said they were having trouble finding what path he might be on and hadn't left yet. He asked them just to get the other ranger to tell them about where they were because he left with the iPad, which had the map. They said he still isn't back. About three more minutes go by, and he hears the voices start up again. He decides to walk to them, hoping maybe they can stop being drunk assholes and maybe have a map. He walked in their direction, but the voices seemed to be getting louder as he got closer. Finally, after 20 minutes, he gave up and walked back. He got a radio call, and they said the other guy had been found passed out covered in vomit and was being taken to the hospital, but he crossed off everywhere. They found a stand, so they have a general idea of where he is. Then the radio died. Then the voices came back. Bored out of his mind, he decided to listen to what they were arguing about, like, well, it wasn't yours to take, I don't care, you knew better, and so on. His guess was that two hunters were arguing over a kill. Then he heard the one shout something intelligible, then silence, the bang, a gunshot. He doused his fire and hid. After that, he heard nothing, just his breathing for the next half hour until he saw TV lights. He told the guy picking him up everything, and they called back. They had people looking for three hours and found nothing. They came back the next day with police and dogs. After about an hour, a shallow grave was found and in it was a long dead man who had clearly been shot in the face. The thing was, it was a skeleton that had been there for years. So either the argument he heard just ended with a bang and both parties went home last night, or he heard the murder of someone from years ago. I have so many of these, but I'll share my favorite. I have been a ranger in the USFS for almost 15 years, but this takes place about 3 years after I joined. 
we were getting calls about a lone wolf with a collar hanging around campsites. Weird, since wolves aren't known to be in the area. But when you work in the field long enough, you start to realize anything is possible. No calls had mentioned violent behavior from the animal, thank God. I departed from the station around noon to check out the places where it had been sighted. I wandered around for about three hours, no further calls during that time, until I took a break for water. I sat down, had a snack, drank some water, and was getting ready to go again when the thing was about 20 feet out, trotting near the tree line. It seemed friendly and had a collar, so I whistled at it, and he came over to me. Getting a closer look, I could see it wasn't a wolf. It was huge, but it was dark and didn't have the right body structure, though I could see why it'd be confusing from a distance. I radioed in and reported that I had the dog with me, but as soon as I said I'd bring it in, the dog took off. He was playing to see how far he could get me to chase him, typical dog behavior. I went after it, and I swear it was a game of chase for at least 5 minutes as we steadily ran through the forest. Please don't go running through the woods unless you know the area like the back of your hand. The dog finally slowed down near a rock bed or creek area and started pacing around a spot. I drew closer and didn't see anything off at first, then I noticed it, the overgrowth had almost disguised what appeared to be bones. I called it in immediately, and another team was sent to recover the remains. When I went to retrieve the dog, he was just gone. But honestly, it wasn't a priority at that point. He was friendly enough, and I figured we'd catch up with him later. The bones were identified as those of a teenage male who died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. He'd been reported missing in the area long before I became a ranger, and there'd been pretty much no hope of finding him. I spoke to his mom on the phone, she called to thank me personally, and she asked how I'd found her son. I mentioned the black dog, then thought I'd said something wrong since there was a pause on her side of the line. After I gave a couple details about the dog, she quietly explained that her son, who struggled with making connections, had sunken into a deep depression after the death of his best friend, the very dog that had led me to him. I think I spent the rest of the day stunned. I continue to be in disbelief, in a way. But I know what happened. I was not a ranger, but I lived on the outskirts of a national park in a cabin. It was a four-mile drive from the main road just to get to the property, and we had no plumbing or power. This property was right next to where the park started, to call it the middle of nowhere is an understatement. My roommate at the time was interning with the park service, but he is a city kid. Every evening at the dead of night, I had been hearing noises in the woods, what I thought was someone walking, but then they just stop in particularly overgrown areas of the jungle, so your mind starts to doubt itself. Is it a pig? A cat? Is it just the wind? The cabin didn't have a locking door, and the owners didn't want me to install one, so I began sleeping in my car. Now, this is a huge property, and I'd park my car over an acre away from the cabin and where I was hearing something. I started hearing those footsteps again. I moved out, and my roommate, who thought I was bonkers, stayed and still slept there without a locking door. He got robbed, not once, but twice, after I moved out. So he finally put up motion-triggered cameras. There was a man with a long rifle who'd hike up to the property, set up in the bushes, and watch us. I'm not a ranger, but I was out camping with my dog one night along the Mogul Lone Rim of Arizona. It was dark, and we were sitting around the campfire when we heard something behind a bush close to our camp. Instead of my dog barking at it, he began to whimper. I didn't think much of it and just tended to the fire. After a couple of minutes, we heard some more noises from a different bush. This time my dog gets up, goes over to the tent, and scratches the door because he wants to go in. I toss a couple of rocks in the direction I heard the noise, and nothing happens. I'm spooked now, so I toss a couple of pieces of wood on the fire and climb into my tent with my dog, hoping that the light from the fire would keep whatever was out there away. We eventually fell asleep, and luckily, had no other disturbances during the night. The next morning, I went out behind the bushes where we had heard the noises and found mountain lion tracks that were circling around our camp. I'm sure glad I didn't go looking at night when I heard the noises. I'm not a ranger, but I used to be in a group that's somewhat like the scouts, so we spent a lot of time in the woods, and some weird things happened often, but most of the time they were easy to explain. One thing happened though, that to this day scares the living out of me. I was a leader for the age group of 8 to 10 years old, and we were out on a camping trip. It was the first year we stayed on that terrain, and it was huge. Normally, we tend to explore the majority of a terrain before the kids arrive, 
so we were aware of any possible dangerous spots to avoid. This time, it was impossible. Every camp we have what we call a night game, it's usually a scary game in which the kids have to complete several tasks while the leaders scare the ever living out of them. Obviously, we had one too during that camp, we masked up as monsters and hid out in the woods close to the checkpoints they had to pass. While running in between checkpoints, I found an open stretch of forest with little to no foliage, so it was ideal for chasing after them. There was no real room to hide besides behind trees, so I couldn't use my flashlight, or they'd be able to see me from miles away. It was dark, like the unsettling kind of dark that plays tricks on your eyes and makes you start imagining things that aren't real. During my stay there, I saw a shadow that was around my size running past me a few times. I couldn't see it very well, so I just assumed I was imagining things because nothing was there when I turned my flashlight on. The game was nearing its end, and I saw the shadow again, this time I could see it vaguely standing near a tree not too far away from me. I thought it was one of the other leaders hiding to scare kids and decided to go over there, as it was about time to go back. I aimed my flashlight towards the tree, and while getting closer, I noticed that there was indeed someone standing there dressed in what looked like a torn burlap sack and had their head covered with a few white plastic bags that looked like they were tied together. I started to feel pure dread, something felt really off. I asked if everything was okay, but they didn't respond. The only thing I heard was this weird sound that sounded like someone knocking on wood. Nevertheless, I went a bit closer until I was about 10 meters away from this person. The knocking sound turned out to be that person smacking his head repeatedly into the tree, and I noticed he looked like a male. He was barefoot, and his arms and legs were covered with crusted mud. His hands were in a weird cramped position. I was convinced this was just one of the other leaders pulling a prank, so I told them to knock it off. He slowly turned his head and started walking towards me. Something inside me just told me to run, it didn't matter if it was just a stupid prank, and I ran away scared for nothing. If this wasn't a prank, it felt like I was in serious danger, so I ran as fast as I could. I heard him running after me, but I didn't want to turn around to look, as I'd probably run into a tree. I arrived back at the campsite, and every single person that could be dressed like that was already there, they couldn't have gotten there before me, and if they did, they sure as hell didn't have the time to change into their regular clothes. Still, I told them that they gave me a good scare with that. They just looked weird at me, thinking I was trying to scare them, and we left it at that. The next day, I wanted to go check it out. Who knows, maybe some weirdo ate the wrong mushroom and might be out there dying from hypothermia. I took someone else with me just in case, and there were nothing but endless trees. We arrived at the tree, where I saw the person banging his head, and there was a dead, skinned, decomposing rabbit nailed to the tree. We called the cops, they looked around quickly and brushed it off as just a prank from another scouting group or some kids from the nearby town and left it at that. We didn't notice anything weird after that, so it probably was a dumb prank, but seriously, some people have a crazy sense of humor. I was in the Gila wilderness, and a convoy of us campers and fishermen were making the drive on the dirt road from Mogolone to Snow Lake when we spotted a forest ranger guy pulled over looking in a ditch. It turns out some idiots tried to make a U-turn and didn't realize the loose rock made it hard to stop, they went over the edge and high centered. We're miles from the nearest official campground, and it's early spring, and the nighttime gets pretty damn cold. We get a jeep with a winch in position and start to pull the guy out of the ditch. Off a hill comes a white dude in a purple velvet sweatsuit. He's got a walking stick, a fanny pack, and the purple velvet sweatsuit, that's it. He's a blonde dude and pretty skinny. He comes up to us and tells us he's German and having a great time. We could not get over the purple velvet suit, it was like a real pimp sweatsuit. The ranger is immediately suspicious and wants to know where he's staying and where he came from. It was around 9 in the morning, and the only way he could have gotten where he came from was to hike for hours. The German guy is goofy and just points off toward the other mountain when asked where he's staying or going. We all think it's funny, but we also question how the guy is getting along with no water and no food. The sun is intense above 5,000 feet, even if it's only 75 degrees. The German guy refuses water or any other help and just crosses the road, going off into the woods. The ranger told us he couldn't really keep the guy from doing that since he seemed okay. He said he'd check a few campsites in that direction later to see if he made it. We get to Snow Lake and commence drinking like fish in order to better catch fish. That evening, the ranger popped by to tell us that nobody at any other camp had seen the dude. He radioed around, 
and no other rangers had abandoned camps or were missing campers, and they surely hadn't seen a German dude in a purple pimp sweatsuit. That ranger rolled off duty the next day, and his replacement came by to make sure the other ranger was smoking something we gave him. We assured him it all happened. I never heard another word about the German in the purple pimp sweatsuit, but it makes for a good story. To be clear, I am not forestry, I just have a related story. My cousin is with the Forest Service in the Montana or Wyoming area, and I decided to go up there with her to literally test the waters. She does hydrology and has to ride out to the middle of nowhere to test streams and snow runoff to ensure no contaminants, so I thought that sounded fun and wanted to do a bit of a tour with her. We were going to have to camp out there for two nights, so we packed up all our gear in saddlebags or saddle bundles and started out. The first day and night were amazing. Beautiful scenery and amazing air quality. It really is so peaceful out there. I love that area and wish I got to go up there more often. Anyway, we started out on the second day, and my cousin said, you want to see something weird? Of course I said yes, so she led me on a bit of a side journey into this tiny little ravine. We ended up traveling about two hours away from the actual path we had laid out. At the very end of this fold in the land, she dismounts and tells me to get off my horse too. We tie them up in this gorgeous little clearing, and she tells me to follow this tiny wildlife path and bring our little rechargeable radio. It is one of those you can plug in or wind up, and it also acts as a lantern if you really need it too, but that kills the batteries quickly. I do, and, out in the middle of nowhere, there is a huge coil of wire sticking out of the ground. The wire itself was not weirdly large, like some buried transmission wire, but small, like 10 or 12 gauge wiring for a house. It trailed off into the brush and trees, so naturally I decided to follow the damn thing out of curiosity. My cousin trails behind me as I do, and this wire, after coming straight up from the ground, is strung across the limbs of trees, then back to the ground, then snakes around rocks, and finally dead ends into an outlet. That outlet is mounted on the side of a desk. It looks like a school teacher's desk from when I was growing up, with a metal base and a pseudo wood or plastic top. No chair, no building, no nothing, just this outlet and this desk. I am staring confused as all hell at this desk in the middle of a forest when my cousin takes the radio, pulls out the cord, and plugs it into the outlet. That thing then lit up and started blaring static. The wire was being fed from somewhere. Now, the place where we were had no road access, no buildings for many miles, and no other people around. And yet, there was a live outlet, super weird. No spooky jump scares or bodies, just one lone powered desk in the middle of the woods. I wish I had taken a picture of it. I was the lone recreation ranger in a small district in southern Idaho. The nearest town to the guard station was about 1.5 hours away by car. After moving into the guard station, solar power was not working, and I hadn't slept for about a month due to various factors, bats in the cabin, something walking on the deck at night. The woods there always had an eerie feeling to them, unlike the southwest Ponderosa forest that I was used to. About two months into the seasonal job, I started to hear something walking and scratching on the deck at night, perhaps even on the door. Now this district was known for its badgers and beavers, so I didn't think much of it. When leaving the cabin at night, I always had an eerie feeling like I was being watched. One night, I was returning from my grocery run, I always went on Tuesday nights, and I had a bad feeling. At the time, I did not have my shotgun in the vehicle. After stepping out of the vehicle, I looked to the right of the cabin, about 50 feet from my front door. All I could see were two eyes about 3.5 to 4 feet in the air. To say I freaked out was an understatement. I started yelling, get out of here, but the eyes only crouched down an inch closer. At this point, I could tell it was a large animal of some kind, definitely not a coyote. I tossed a piece of firewood in the general area, and the creature leapt back a bit but did not make a sound. Toss four or five more pieces, and the creature still inched forward. At this point, I fumbled with the keys, of course, the solar power was out again. I managed to get inside and grabbed my shotgun. Technically, you are not supposed to have guns in government housing, but who lives in the hills have eyes backcountry and does not carry. I went outside, the creature was a bit closer. I still could not get a good look with my poor quality headlamp. Loaded the shotgun and continued to throw pieces of wood with one hand. Finally, the creature walked back into the brush. That night, I drank about four IPAs and slept with my shotgun. In the morning, the trail crew came up, and we found mountain lion tracks all over the porch, rocking bench, 
and compound leading back to the creek. After that event, I always heard the rocking chair move and someone or something walking on the porch, but I never found any tracks after that point. Considering that it was always muddy up there, it was weird to not find any tracks. I've been stalked by mountain lions before and never had that eerie feeling like I did in those woods. Alright, obligatory, not a ranger, but here goes. I was in the forest, camping out under the lovely forests of Jersey. We set up camp, we're all chatting in our tents, and left the fire up so we could tell some great scary stories. All was going well until we heard a rustling in a bush of scary textbook stuff. We all think it's one of our friends who hasn't come back from the potty break, but just as the bush was rustling, we saw the outline of a person circling our tent. We call out for our friend, but a random person does not answer, and at this point, he stops in place. We all start getting freaked out as the person we see from outside could not possibly be our friend due to the height difference. One of the members of the group lies, saying that we are armed and will kill him. A good minute goes by before we all hear what I can describe as the most shrill scream I have ever heard, and dude just up and leaves. The creepy part about this is that our friend who was out to the restroom says he heard a scream but saw no one around the camping area or even footprints of where the man should have been. We were also pretty deep into the woods, so it's not as if anyone who was just passing by could have found us, at least not easily.